Yeah, uh, Migs is just meta if you're really nice engages. And I think that's a little bit of the problem in the lower end team. Uh, is that they kind of don't have the organization with that. So, of course, they're going to ban Ziggs on. Then Cassidy, they're the first big team. They're banning Cassidy, though. And I mean, that's just mainly because... Actually, I don't know. Like, they have a Cassidy player on their team. Yeah. Don't they? I'm yeah. sure Kirk can play damn anything. Yeah, I have no idea why they banned Cassidy. It's been, a, it's been a very similar three bans out of Ocelot World and Millennium uh, throughout the entire week that they want to take away the same three champions every time. But with the Zillion, at least, and Renekton taking away by paying gaming, we're going to see Grog as we already I, saw Arnett earlier on played him in the jungle. Yeah, I definitely think that's a really good first pick because you can put him in the jungle. I mean, I've seen him play at top, and you can play him mid. So you can pretty much go anywhere. So I think it's a really versatile pick. Uh, I think that's pretty good. All right, well, we're seeing Thresh and Fire locked in here for Pain Gaming. And Sir T, he's been, he's been pretty much everywhere throughout all these jungle picks. And Minerva getting me on that Thresh. And you remember we were casting the first uh, the first best of three between Pain and Isris, and Minerva could not hit a hook. But once he did, it was like hook champion, kill champion. Yeah, I mean, and he's a little bit rougher lane for Thresh, um, even with the stun changes. But uh, I think it should be a pretty even lane, regardless of what AD carry they pick. Lucian's a pretty balanced AD carry, and he has pretty good matchups against all of the different AD carries. So I wouldn't be surprised to see maybe a long-range AD carry like Caitlyn or something out of pain here. All right, well, they are still sitting on their picks here, and I have to realize there's a lot at stake here. $15,000, the, the ticket to Katowice as well, and they're actually going to log in Jinx. BRTT did fantastic with Jinx earlier on. Yeah, he hit every Super Mega Death Rocket, <laughs> just sniping people everywhere. So I think it's a really good pick, and she's a pretty good matchup against Lucian as well. You can push the lane up really early if you start with your Q, and uh, you can just gain early lane advantage with that, hit that level 2 really early. And of course, her level 6 all-in potential, if Thresh hits a hook, somebody's going to die. Somebody, yeah, indeed. And we do see Trundle actually being picked up here for that top lane for Venom. I think that's a really early Trundle pick. I don't, I'm not sure they should have done that that early, because I think Trundle has a couple of picks that you probably wouldn't play him into. Um, but let's see if Millennium has anything for him. I kind of actually want to see that locked in and see Annie not as uh, the support, but it looks Isn't like... Isn't that Soaz that plays the Blitzcrank Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. I mean, where, where are you at, Soaz? I was thinking, yeah, Fnatic, I mean, that Yellow Star plays Shen top lane, and Soaz played Blitzcrank bottom. Oh, might see Warwick uh, top. Oh, wow, so we're going into Darien's kind yeah, of style right Darian there. Yeah, we got Darien up in here now. <laughs> They're going to... Yeah, that's, that's pretty much his main champion. I can at least... Sin. Yeah, I, I would like the least pick here. You're going to be able to match by as far as uh, early pressure. You're actually going to out pressure early. And even at level 6, you're going to be able to counter gank on her and uh, put just as much pressure on the lane. So I like that. And then I guess they're going to play Olaf into Trundle. So that's a pretty good pick. Um, he'll be able to do true damage to Trundle. So even if he does decide to stack some tank stats, uh, he'll still be able to burst them down. But I think it's probably just going to be two tanks farming top, if I had my guess. Two greased up fat lads from Grinsby, as Demon would say. <laughs> yeah. But with the life that we have for Millennium while we sit on that last pick out of Pain Gaming, how do you oh. think? Oh, wow. Uh, the <laughs> I see a lot is Shifter nowadays. Um, but I think a top level Ari is pretty good, but I don't think I would pick it in the Gragas. Gragas can roam just as hard as you can, he can push up the wave just as hard as you can, and he has the potential to all in and kill you at any point in the game. So, kind of a weird pick up there. Um, they have a really big pick, pick comp, though. They have Vi that can initiate with their ultimate. They have Trundle Pillar where they can slow somebody down and then catch them with the corks uh, from the Jinx or a Thresh Hook. So I think they're just trying to pick off people around objects with that team comp. And yeah, then Pain is just, I guess they just have like this, not even a Wombo comp. I don't really think there's much synergy with their comp. They have like the Annie Gragas initiate, but they're just going to have like Lee Sin and Olaf running into their team and Lucian trying to shoot people in the tank line, so it's kind of a weird team comp. I don't know. I don't, I don't really like the Millennium's team comp that much. It's not that much synergy, but if they just win in the landing phase, it's not going to matter anyways. Kind of very true, and one thing I do like seeing out of uh, Pain's composition is the whole Ari Thresh combo, where if you hit a hook or you hit a charm, you're going to hit it with something else right after that with one of the two. Yeah, I remember CLG saying that in one of the LCS splits. It's just... Somebody hits a skill shot, we're all going to hit our other skill shots on top of them, and then they're going to die. So. And that's what was funny. That was what Ultimate was just so damn good at back of the summer split when they had these really Whenever they went for an engage, 
no one hesitated. If someone went in, they just all piled in. No matter what, if it was terrible engaged, they were gonna lose it, they didn't care because that is so scary to go up against. Just having all five people committed to a fight. Things is PC reset and oh, uh, there we go. good to go. Looks like it will be starting here in just a second, guys. So to remind you, we have Millennium here in the Grand Finals against Pain Gaming, who are able to upset Ocelot World not just 30 minutes ago. And we are going to be kicking this game off. So we're going to have Millennium over on the blue side. We're going to have Pain Gaming over on the red side. Level one action. We talked about it a little bit earlier on, but refresh your memory. I think they're all just going to line up down the river and stare at each other grimacingly. <laughs> you want to put some money on that? <laughs> Let's do it, yeah. Because right now, Pain's grouped up pushing bottoms. I like to put some money on this. Uh... <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll buy you a drink tonight. How about that? Nice. If, if nice. I'll get the most expensive one I possibly can. Uh, but either okay, way. Mr. Pina Colada. <laughs> Good. Don't judge me. But we have Pain Gaming moving out towards the bottom side of the map as well as Millennium. We could see some sort of engagement. Millennium. They seem to have the read on this. They are grouped up, waiting for the action. They're off the side. They have the stun. And when Pain walks into this, they might get that five minute stun that can be so crucial. And there's a the charm. It lands on the cabin. They're going to get the hook onto him as well. He's getting very little Venom. He throws very little on the ignite ticket. He's got to go down first. Over to Jerry and they're switch over to Cersei. Are they gonna bust for the one? Yes, they do. The, the body slam out of Kerb and helps pick up the kill. They get two kills now. Now Minerva, he's in trouble. He does have flash escape where Arne and Kerb do not have it. But they are chasing this down. They don't want to let it go. And just like that, they seem to have the perfect read on Pain. They pick up the first two kills, and we're finally starting to see. Oh no, Kami. With the disrespect, Lisa. <laughs> oh my God. I guess I own you your little pina colada then. Um, yes. Yeah, they ended up hooking the Olaf. It looked like they really predicted that. They had the Olaf sitting in there. He was the bait. Uh, he's the only person in the brush. They, you get a little bit of vision of it probably once you throw your skill shots in and you hit that hook. And they heard it hit, and then they just went all in on it. And of course, they got AoE. Gragas body slam does an insane amount of damage early on. So they just got cleaned up off of that. But you got to remember, early kills in the game with the change to Season 4, not worth as much gold. So usually before that, I'm like, oh my god, well, the game is it's pretty, it's pretty much over. But I think it's going to give Millennium a lot of breathing room, but I don't think it's going to be a huge advantage. I mean, it's only like 800 gold at this point in the game. So. One thing I want to touch on, though, I'll give your opinion, is the amount of summoners that were used for that fight. You mean all the summoners? <laughs> basically, yeah, basically all the summoners. And does this open up, or is this more of a benefit to Aranea to gank, or is this more of a benefit to Surti? Well, I mean, the main thing to look at is where the bot lane still has other summoners. So, uh, usually if you're a Lee Sin or a Vi, you kind of want to aim into the bot lane since they already have a lot of CC. But I think you're going to see a lot of pressure mid on this, since Gragas doesn't have flash, neither does Ari. And if you had a body slam on Ari and Lee Sin follows it up, she's going to be dead. You see Kerb, he's doing a lot of work right there, pushing him out almost instantly. We do have a couple of items picked up. I mean, mostly just wards out of everyone else who picked up those kills, just going to store the rest of that money for themselves. And what lane do you think we really need to watch out for? Like, where's all the action go down? I want to say... It's got to be mid lane, for sure. I mean, both mid laners don't have flash, so... Uh, I think if the jungler shows up and either Ari hits a charm or Gragas hits a body slam, somebody's going to die. Well, right now, both junglers are going to be able to take their own buffs here. Arne going to be at his blue as well as Sir T. And Arne, I wonder if he's going to go off the back as well as Sir T because they have so many possibilities. Like you said, bottom lane, pretty much have every summoner available, or at least their escape mechanism summoners. Yeah, I don't think that he's going to be moving anywhere around bottom, but I can definitely see mid lane pressure. It looks like Lee Sin's going to be going top, though. He knows both the top laners have all their all their summoners down, so he might try to do something off of this. He's looking for that kill on Avena. If he can land that Q or Kevin can just bait him out a little bit further, they're going to be able to make a big play off this. They do go in. They do get the slow. Venom gets caught with the Q. They're going to get some good damage onto him. Are they going to go for the dive here? RNA is getting very low on health. He's forced to actually back away, almost going down. If Olaf had his ignite for that, then he did blow in a level one fight, that would have been a dead trunk. Either way, they do push him out of the lane. They're going to go shove this in. They're going to force Venom to be even further behind. He only has that 6 CS compared to that 17 now on Kevin. That's such a massive way to be losing. Not only the, the farm and the CS, but. That's so much experience. That's a level and a half right there. Even the cannon minions in that wave. And he's just missing all of that. It's so brutal. And of course, the Vi, not even in position to come clean that up. And Kevin, he's... Ooh, he gets spotted out by that war, but he was waiting on the sideline to make something happen off that. And that turret, he you know, dropped down to about half health here. And we're going to see Summers come up here momentarily. It's about 30, 40 seconds to go. And I wonder, is Arne going to visit that top lane yet again? Is he going to visit somewhere else? But he's already applied that pressure on the map, giving him that 1,200 gold advantage. Yeah, I think the damage is done top. I don't think Trundle's going to be pushing out anytime soon. So uh. Right now, you're seeing that harass come in. Adam Millennium, J. Reed getting beer to see. Well, that's a lot here. We do see on the top side, though, Arne goes straight in for Sir T. And Sir T doesn't have that flash to get away. Arne has an ability to run around. He's actually kind of getting caught off right here. He's got Venom to worry about, but he can hustle probably take him 1v1 in this fight. Said he does ward up, does safeguard to it. He should be able to escape this, I want to say, but Venom trying to go after him does get the slow. Sir T, though, not there to really back him up. That level 1 kill gold gives him an extra ward to hop to. 
Gives him a pretty good advantage and a nice escape route. All right, so about five minutes in here. Let's take a look at the early CS across the board because we already see results of RNA coming towards the top side. 18 to 7 now. We have a level 3 Olaf compared to a level 2 Venom, but you can just see in the health alone that Kevin just has a giant advantage. Yeah, if you get the level advantage on somebody in lane with Olaf, just because of the nature of his abilities and how his chain CC works with his axe, he can just slow you down the lane over and over again. Uh, it becomes really brutal if that wave gets pushed in favor where uh, the Olaf can freeze it in front of his tower. And it looks like the wave is going to be pushing in. So if Olaf's smart and he freezes that wave in front of his tower, that Trindle's never going to be able to farm again. Or RNA is going to come in for a gank as well. Venom doesn't really have a way to escape here. He does get the nice block down with a pillar of filth, but they're not able to catch up to him just yet. Will they go for the dive here? Kevin's taking up. He does have the ignite. They're going to go for it. Venom's going to go down. Kevin, will he be able to escape? Yes, he does. And that is another kill going over to Millennium. 3 0 now, five and a half minutes in. Yeah, RNA has this guy's number. He does not want this Trundle to get going, and he doesn't want him to get fed at all. Um, if they basically take him out of the game, because the Trundle, who's not farmed up and doesn't have a lot of levels and is not tanky and doesn't have Blade of the Rune King or any of those kind of core items, he's literally useless in a team fight. He's going to put his pillar down, ult, and then he's literally going to do nothing. Um, and level 1 ult doesn't even sap that much stats, so um, I think he just wants to take that tank out of them. That's their primary tank in their team, and if you take the tank out of the team comp, you just you can just run the Jinx over. So here's a question for you, because I always wonder how you know early aggression or early results in a game can really affect you down the line. Venom and Kevin. Since Kevin has his giant advantage over him, has a 20 CS lead, has a level advantage, do you expect Kevin to keep pushing that top lane once he gets that turret down, or do you expect him to group up with Millennium, maybe go for some global objectives? Well, I actually don't think he's ever going to try to take that top turret. He wants that turret to stay up, because he wants... Okay, Barrel does... It. Okay, he's actually very light with Night 2A, but he does survive. Oh no, here comes Sir T, and he gets it down. that Arya off guard and just nail her in the face and pick up that kill. Um, that's pretty, pretty nice. And RNA really showing, really trying to stop here with that. Lee said he's behind quite a bit of CS, but he's been involved in every single kill right now. Just making his presence known towards the spawn side of the map. Maybe trying to scare out pain. And right now, Kami going down. We have clear advantages for Millennium. I mean, mid lane, 51 to 37 CS. But Jerry getting hooked up right there under turret. He's actually getting hit by the turret as well. Ignite does go down. Will they commit off this? Because he forced to back away because of Creatine. Jerry's gonna have to go home and heal up here, but Sir T, he's actually going for semi invade here. Maybe it's expect his blue to be taken. Yeah, he sees Lee Sin's in the bottom. Sorry. Yeah, he sees Lee Sin's in the bottom lane, so of course, usually people start their blue a lot. Probably not at Lee Sin. So he wants to have that warded for when it does come up. He's gonna go to his red and probably try to contest that, that blue buff. Alright, well, let's see how that goes. About eight minutes in here. And right now, Millennium. Let's take a look at the early items that have been, that have been built up so far. Let's check out Kevin. Double Doran's Blade, do uh, Doran Shield. And a chain vest. Yeah, he has so many Doran's items, and he has the chain. It's like, a, oh my God, he has so many Doran's items. He has this chain vest. He's probably gonna go into Sunfire, maybe a Glacial Shroud after that. But there's no way that Trundle can do any damage to him at this point. He has a cloth armor and a Doran shield. He literally will do nothing to this Olaf. The Olaf has so much control, and he can do anything he wants to this guy right now. He can. He's probably at the point where he can just straight up dive on his own uh, pretty soon. And you see, Kevin, he is level six, approaching level seven right now. We take a look at Venom real quick. He's just about to hit level 6, so finally have that ultimate, that extra sustain off of that. In the meantime, though, we're having RNA. He's got this whole map controlled. He's going for this blue still here. It looks like he's going to be able to take it. Kirk has the zone available right now with his ultimate if he wants to use it, and they should be able to pick this one up. RNA will actually take that for himself. Yeah, Whatever actually, was able to spot it, he can take it. I'm actually really surprised that Dubai decided to just take his red and then just not do anything about uh, going for the enemy blue. Um, said he just went back to base. Actually, I don't think it's been taken just yet over for... Uh, for Millennium, it looks like it's in here, and we're actually seeing Surti finally come around, so we might see that wish come true. And he realized that Kami needs that blue. Will he be here in time, though? It's just He's in position to stop this. He has an ultimate available, but and Kerp will be able to pick up that blue. Exactly the most amazing thing. But actually, I think it's a little bit better now because. You know, it has 10% CDR. Mm -hmm. They kind of nerfed the mana regen on a little bit. Um, but the energy regen is actually really nice for making a lot of plays. And since Kerb got the blue buff from the enemy team, uh, it's going to be really good for pressure. And we're seeing all the other. Slaying on BRTT, knocks it down to about a 
But uh, that BS sword, but Creason has it as well as long, or as well as a Ruby Crystal. Right now, Archer on the going on a curve. They already saw Arnea there. So I'm a little bit surprised. Yeah, did he just critical. explosive crash? He just missed his own, didn't he? It was I so he he did. threw it point blank in front of him. It almost looked like he didn't come out of it. And completely. I'm surprised that they the, didn't decide to go in on that. They saw Gragas' ult miss. They could have put a lot of pressure and probably killed him. Well, right now, we have Kevin still dominating the CS of Venom. And the thing is, what about Venom what did so well throughout the entire week was that he was always farming. I mean, if he fell behind, he would never fall this far behind. He was always a rock solid person to go to uh, for his team, a, ba a backbone to really. Yeah, he was He was definitely the workhorse of his team. I mean, he was in the thick of every single fight. He's just this huge tank wall in every single fight. And can't quite do that this game. Uh, uh, he's just falling pretty behind. But it, it, one thing to notice, he keeps getting these double golems. The overall. Let's take a look at that. 3,300 gold. So, pretty much 1,000 gold in favor of Kevin. And you're seeing that reflect. What's the effect on. TP for that? Uh, I mean, there's so, much, so many jungle camps in the game right now, and they respawn so fast. It doesn't really matter what they jungle camps at this point. And even Vi, she's gonna focusing her time bottom right now, trying to get that gank off, so she's not going to be going for those jungle camps anyways. All right, well, he does have the ultimate available. He doesn't have flash, but they do obviously have that lantern gank, and Thresh has his ultimate up as well. Jerry's sitting on that stun. Tipper's not available just yet, and Surti's not going to be... Actually, would be spotted when he goes into this next push. It's kind of an interesting time for him to go for this gank when the wave's so far pushed up. I mean, if he goes in an ult and somebody flashes him into turret and he gets stunned, it could be really bad for him. You even saw Kami trying to come around down towards the bottom side. I wonder if he's trying to expect a counter or try to gank uh, RNA when he comes in for this, trying to turn it around. But the way Ars going for that turret, not really caring about Ben and hitting him right there, as you can see. And that turret's already very low in life now. Yeah, the Trundle does literally no. I think he's healing him at this point. It's, it's just pretty ugly to watch. That would suck if he had negative AD and actually he'll jump with the flash that cuts out to a beer to tease the troll. He gets hit with the Q. But the fight interrupt! It stops RNA from getting to a beer to T with the, the super pick of death rocket. Always picks up the kill on RNA as a nice kickback comes in. But Creighton gets pulled back into the team and they're gonna reset this with no kills coming in. But that was a beautiful Q yeah, out of Sir T. Beautiful to stop that. play by Sir T. The ball breaker ended up knocking the Leeson out of his kick. Jinx would have been dead for sure at that hit. So really nice play uh, defending him right there. Venon being forced he's an ultimate in that top side so to heal a little bit here. Make sure he can be dope. Flash out right there on the bottom side, and Kevin, he, he's just unstoppable. He's still almost double the CS right now with Venon, and it's constantly taking the drum creeps like you're saying before, but I'm really worried because Kevin's sitting on 1,600 gold. He's going to be such a tanky beast that I wonder if Dragon is going to be a, a real thing to happen soon. I think he's found out where Trundle's been this whole game, and uh, <laughs> I don't think he likes it, so he's just going to try to take that goal. But let's see close if Kevin's going to go for the engage. He has that goal. He's going to be able to take yeah, it here. The thing is, Ari is missing off the map right now, so I True. don't think he wants to commit to that. Well, that turret already down to 600 life. Well, the big thing here is that turret is eating every single one of those creeps. They're not getting anything out of it. Yeah, it's going to hurt him quite a bit more as he progresses this game. But he has been able to go giant spell. He has been able to build up a little bit tanky and still so strong. He does open it down. He's going to get caught here. It's flash over that wraith camp wall. And with that, it actually forces somehow uh, to back away. He have the ultimate available. Yeah, that is a straight up. In air phase, it's like, what are you going to do about it? The Vi was even sitting there backing right in front of him. And he decided to almost tower dive the Ari right in front of that Vi. 2v1 tower dive. And yeah, he's just still staying in the lane. He's full. Look at this. Arna coming in the back. So they know load up right here. But they do see Trouble coming up the side. He oh does get the kill God. with the. Second. And now Venom trying to go out to Kirk here. He does have Sir T coming in from the back side. We can hear him laugh. I mean, he's taking no damage from Venom. Yeah, I don't think he cares at all about the Trundle. Uh, the Chain Vest doesn't exactly give Trundle that much damage, so I uh, don't think he's going to be too scared of him. Um, but yeah, that Ari just took so much damage from that barrel. And one of the reasons they rushed into this DFG, so they don't really have any magic in this. Um, and that's going to be a dead curve. Just coming a little bit too far, be a little bit too aggressive, trying to take a buff, and he does get punished with it. Picking up the first kill of the game here. Five yeah. to one now in favor of Millennium. And Kirk just needs to calm down just a little bit. Between all these fives. And Millennium just full, are all in this bottom lane. BRTT getting very low. Wing that side. It does land. And that is going to be BRTT dead as well. One kill of peace for Millennium in this bottom lane. And now it's seven to one. Millennium are just starting to run away with this game. Well, remember at the beginning of this game, you said you didn't really see much out of Cretan in that bottom lane. Uh, well, there it is right for you. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like they took control of this. And I mean, 
BRT team and Urban, they're not exactly just like a slot of I'm against it with Pierce. Yeah, I definitely think he's got better AD carries. Right, well, right now, we have Kevin still being no in the top. Lane. I will say, it's definitely a pain in their ass right now because he constantly shoves in that top lane over <laughs> and over. <laughs> that was totally intentional, too. I feel bad for that one. But Curve going to be able to take his own move up here, it looks like. And they have been able to build up a 6,000 gold lead. They haven't even bothered going for Dragon yet. Yeah, it's a 6,000 gold lead in 15 minutes in the game without taking a single Dragon. That's pretty big. Uh, a lot of that gold is from powers, but of course, it's seven huge CS to in the top lane. It's double his farm. That's so much farm differential. And I think just because that trundle is so far out of the game, it might just cost them the game. I don't see a way of them making it back in at this point, because they have this pick comp, they want to take over objectives and take people off, and if you're behind, you can't really do that. And you're seeing Kami just be sold out from that one barrel, but I mean, all that yesterday simply can't. You see, every lane is winning for, for Millennium. They're not losing anywhere except maybe the jungle because of the difference in farm, but still in the end, you have RNA of being in five of the seven kills, where Porchy for uh, Sir T already has that one death, and you see RNA of Looking around, looking for another kill yet again. Looking for that early sweepers, and it's been working out so well for them because he's been giving them the opportunity to make a lot of these ganks happen. Yeah, he's been controlling so much of the vision. He's literally been everywhere on the map in this game. Um, and he definitely made his presence felt top lane. That trundle is still hurting from that. So I think they're just going to try to make a play on Dragon. Um, they have so much pressure in the bot lane. But it looks like Payton actually wants to contest this. Well, we do have Kevin coming down from the top side, though. They do try to stop it. Looks like they're going to back away. Kevin. Yeah, smart decision for them to back out on that. If they got. They probably would all instantly die. Not worth losing the game over this. Watch this and flash out of it. That was three ultimates used and no kills picked up. And now Ari's getting chased down by Kevin. He already uses Ghost. Already uses, there's this Ragnarok actually popped. He's looking for the early miss. Kami, all of this. The rest of the game, four men grouped up. Are going to take the first middle turret and maybe a second. Yeah, you know you're in a bad situation when your mid and top lane is getting 1v2. And that's like what I was saying at the beginning of the game is even if you get a thresh hook or a pick on that Lee Sin, he's such a slippery champion that He's going to be able to make it away from that really easily. And he showed it right there perfectly, just like you said. I mean, it did commit his flash, but he, he got rid of three ult That's really been impactful in these ganks just yet. That's really they know Ari's ultimate's down because he's using the top lane, so I wouldn't be surprised if they try to get a pick here. Kevin, in the meantime, doing what a Kevin does. Just farming out that top lane. 160 CS now, 18 minutes in. He's, the funny thing is, he's not even leading his team because Kirk is actually at 164. He's going to get chased down here. He doesn't have Ignite. He doesn't have Ragnarok. Around to fight this, he does get ignited up. Ben and Sir T pretty much using everything they possibly can. We see the rest of them coming in from the bottom side. Hey, get a flash over the wall. He's gonna get the start on the fence. See the flash out. Oh, sorry, and they do push him back. They're gonna save Kevin's life. They're not gonna chase them down, but they do keep him alive nonetheless. But we do see Kami coming up the side. He has flash, he has ignite, he has ultimate, but he's not gonna go for it. He's gonna back out instead. Yeah, his team came in just the nick of time to save him. Uh, look, they didn't have any, well, they didn't want to have anything to do with that. I mean, they have this fake right of course, that Annie has reflected over that point. So, really good for them to get out of that. Um, oh. But I like what they're doing with them. They're just basically taking the trundle out, out of the game. Um, he's not going to be in any of the team fights. They don't really have a very good tank fight. Um, Ola's going to just sit up top. He's going to push top all day. And they have to send more than one person to deal with them. It's, they're really doing a really good job of using a 4 1 split. And even then, I mean, if it's not Surti and Venom, then they might be able to get turned around 1v2 by Kevin with how strong he is now. Yeah, he ended up beating the Ari and the Trundle earlier in the fight. So, uh, yeah, I don't think anybody can handle that all off right now. Well, we do see Kerb sitting on 2,000 gold. Has that things of Holy Grail done? We do see the DFG done on Kami, which is a you know, typical Ari build, but who, who, who is he going to burst on that team? Exactly. Line? I mean, that Olaf's pretty damn tanky. Lee Sin, he has the Sight Stone and the Ancient Golem on top of that. And uh, yeah, the themes gives you a ton of MMR, and you also have your uh, damage reduction on uh, Gragas's uh, W. So, I mean, the only one he could get is Creatine or Jerry, but if he goes for them, he's going to get stunned and locked out. Yep. Oh, but there we go. Arne getting caught yet again. We did see three ultimate juice last time. He's going to be able to escape this time, most likely. No, he gets taken out by Sir T and Pain. Picking up a match to kill. Can they make anything else happen off this? You see, Kirk, he does have his ultimate available. A little bit confused why he didn't use it to save RNA, though. Yeah, they. Uh, I don't know. I think he. Yeah, I have no idea why he didn't use his ultimate. Was it not up? Or, it was definitely up. So I'm pretty yeah. surprised that he didn't use the cast to try to either A, counter engage, or B, save Lee Sin. Either way, Payne getting a much needed kill. They're almost 10,000 gold behind. And that one, and we did go over to Sir T. So 
He's able to pick up that kill and maybe get a little bit tankier than he needs to. But Kevin, in the meantime, going for the red back here. He might get actually closed in on because he's standing right, right on top of the ward. Tommy doesn't have ultimate going up. He's good. So I don't really think that uh, Kevin's going to be too scared of the people closing in on him. And of course, he some kind of CC on him. The thing is, that's not a good sign if you're a pain fan. I mean, two times in a row they had to uh, pick him up. And all Let's go ahead and go over those really quickly as we have them. So for Kevin Topwave, has a Sunfire Cape done, has a Ninja Taba, he has Negatron Cloak. You look over at uh, specifically creates him, Triforce done, the BF Sword done. He's basically a full BF Sword ahead of his opponent right now on to BRTT. And then we look at Jay Re, he almost had that Talisman of Ascension done, and he has boots of mobility. Yeah, once he has a Talisman of Ascension, they'll have so much initiation capability. And I'm pretty sure she's gonna try to flash tippers uh, that Jinx and have the Gragas follow up, and then of course Olaf's gonna be running with Talisman Ascension. Jinx is not gonna survive. It's gonna be very difficult for Pain, but they have proven in the past they have been able to come over worse odds than this, and Kevin, he's still... There's a lot of words I want to use for him right now, but he's been doing such a good job distracting pain? top lane. He's being a Pain, right? Yeah, he's being a Pain right now <laughs> for, uh, for Pain Gaming, but he's been playing this role perfectly. I mean, he realized he had the advantage, and he's been using it, he's been playing it down to a T, like exactly what they needed to. Yeah, RNA gave him the advantage in the early early game. Uh, really good job by him, and he came back and revisited the lane so just to make put the nail in the coffin, and Kevin has just run off with that lead. He also has a 100 CS lead over him. Yeah, he's at 90 CS over him. It's pretty damn ugly. And of course, they have all that tower gold on top of that. Kevin, gonna get caught up a little bit here. And I, I said caught up, but I'm pretty sure Sir T is the one that's actually caught. They actually commit the ultimate onto him. I'm not sure that's the target they want to make happen. They don't really have any DPS back with help. He has Ghost, he has Ragnarok. He's gonna pop that one. He's still sitting on top of that Ghost, but instead, he's not. The rest of the lane to come in as RNA going back to the gauge. We have Tommy coming out from middle of the hook. Unfortunately, not gonna land. And look at the meantime what's happening. Creatin is just pushing this middle lane, and the rest of Millennium are just distracting. Yeah, Millennium is just trying to buy time. They saw Creighton pushing bottom a lot earlier. Um, Creighton just took advantage of that, and they just took that free buffer. There's nobody down there doing anything about it. And of course, they had the Dragon Timer. He's going to swing down right after that, collect that free global gold. And with that Dragon going down, this could be Millennium taking a 10,000 gold lead here exactly at 23 minutes in. And if you're in, you know, pain shoes, what do you need to do to get back in this? Because they have one sweeper lens. Now the rest, you know, the four warring trinkets, but the thing is they can't even fight anyone because as we're saying, you know, you ult Kevin, it doesn't really do anything. You ult RNA, it doesn't really do much because they're just so tanky. Well, not only that, if you look at the map, their jungle, they see every single thing that's happening. So, how are you going to pick on somebody, which is what Pain's entire team comes to. Can you assume the 4-1 split until they take down that top turret, and then they'll probably move on to the Baron. And Kevin, he's just this shit. Shoving Venom out, and Venom's had so many great trouble in that to have a, as a game picked up. Arne actually actually see Kevin coming from the top side, they're gonna go for this turret, and Trumbo's nowhere to be found. He had to go back to base because he was so low. Yeah, everybody's completely in position to cut off on that right side near the blue buff. Seems really low. Like they're reading a book, they're executing the act playbook that they had before this game even started. There's one thing I, uh, by, by the text and really pulling this one off. It just seems like pain. They don't really have an answer to this. They're even tanking up that turret. We see Kami actually getting very low. I believe that was to curb with just one little combo. Yeah, it's really good play by Millennium here, rotating top lane after this, keeping pain on their toes, making sure that they don't have time to get as many objectives as they can, but they pain and farm back up and get any eyes on their champion. Right now, you see Kami forced to go back to base here. He finally has arrived, but it's just too late. They're going to get the top turret, and that's going to take him to 6 to 0 in favor of turrets, 72 in favor of kills, 12,000 gold lead almost here. They have the potential to do Baron if they want to ward up the enemy jungle yet again, but even though they've been actually they picked up more Barons than anyone else here in Intel Extreme Master Sao Paulo, I'm not sure if they're going to go for that or they even need it. At well, this first point. they need to A, go back and get some wards. Everybody needs to get pink wards, sweeper lenses. They took out that mid and top turret. What that does is allows them to control the entire red side jungle. They have nowhere to run back to. It's so far back to a uh, save point, which is their base turrets, um, that if somebody gets caught trying to check for Baron, or trying to ward for Baron once they clear out all the vision, uh, it's going to be a free Baron or a free inhibitor off of that. So uh, Annie, what she's going to do right now is to try to clear out all the vision around Baron. And then the rest of their team is going to get wards. I'll get that pick. What the shame is is that I mean, personally, what do you think? Did, should Pain invest in any more super wards? Or super
for tickets to kind of clear out that vision so they can't afford to push out without being afraid of getting stunned up. To be honest, when you're 11k, the only I think they have to try to check for Baron or test it, they're completely dying. So the proper reaction is to just get all the ways pushed out and then just try to you basically have to wait for the laner to make a mistake and try to defend and basically hold out in a base turret. Well, Baron down to about 8,000 life right now. We do see Pain working their way over. I think they sense something is happening, but that barrel's going to do some decent damage uh, to Painter there. They're going to win up over the wall. We do have Cersei with that flash available. He could go for the steal here, but Jerry getting caught in the backside. Kobe gets blown the hell up. And you see Jerry still might be trying to drop up. Minerva can drop very low. He's going to go down. And we see Kevin so damn tanky. He finally does go down, but be not before taking out the RTC. The flash with Kevin gets the bodies of the Cersei. Forces the flash out of him. Creighton's going to hop over the wall. And now Ben, the last one standing, doesn't get body slammed, but he's forced to flash away. And Millennium losing two. Two people but picking up four kills is sure put a lot of the inhibitor. Yeah, that channel is quite a bit. They're not get the bear net, but there's four members of paint dead. So they're just gonna go in. I'm not sure they'll be able to take it on this wave. They have no wave coming up for a while. They do a massive damage to it, but I don't think they're gonna quite be able to get it yet. Um one thing I would have liked to have seen out of Millennium there is they had so much, they could have put up so much vision control, and they could have just got an easy pick. Like, you saw how much damage that Gragas did. That Ari instantly died. So they can do that to almost any member of Pain Gaming. They just need to wait somewhere where they have good vision control, and just pick somebody off when they come in to check it. Right now, we see Minerva with that super lens. He's spotting out that blue that's not going to be there. He actually might walk right into Curve, and look, the damage Curve gets tan. He run away, because can he escape? He actually can't, he kite them long enough right now. It looks like the Super Mega Death Rockets up on the bottom side, fortunately not going to hit, and will Cersei down as we have creature back this he's hitting both at the same time he doesn't care who he kills but pain will be able to escape from that and RNA even getting very closer lazy to get the kill he gets one more auto attack up we see the ult the W come out of the corner gets the kill bloodthirsty this game he doesn't care who he's going against he just keeps flying into everybody he doesn't care if he dies and pain getting a lot of much needed kills right there I don't think anyone even went down, if anything, that was Minerva, but you can afford to get rid of a support if you're able to pick up a kill onto RNA and on the curve right there. Creatin just going to be backing away from that top side. Decent amount of gold to spend, I would imagine, over on the side of Pain, but right now we do have Creatin being chased down by Sir T, and they're just running. They're holding hands right now. <laughs> yeah. They're best of friends. It's like, all right, let's just go run off together. Creatin not able to dodge away from that just yet, but he's still kind of for a long time. Did you see Jerry come up from the bottom side top lane? Only going to come out of Sir T, not doing a lot of damage. But he is able to get under the turret. Jerry is now here. They're gonna look for the stun. They get the stun on the search. He under the turret. He goes down. Greenton does survive. In fact, pick up the kill for himself. Now they're actually chasing up pain. Red Rock Pop with the post coming back and shrimp this kiss. And it looks like they're gonna get another kill here. Can Greenton get that triple kill? He's looking for it. Yes, it does. Those three Greenton's kills are unstoppable. Gonna guarantee a Baron unless somebody messes up a smite. So uh Vi is down for another 10 seconds. That Baron, even if it's in time before she gets down there. Of course, I guess it's gonna be zoning out with ultimate. If somebody comes try to test this, it's probably so we're making death rockets coming from the side. Just a little bit too early right there. Baron's still very healthy right now. It looks like Millennium, the back of those three kills, are going to get Baron. Get a ginormous lead here. 14,000 gold, 29 minutes in. And this might be the end of Pain here in this first map. I mean, look at the bright side. Jinx is getting that dragon. Hey, oh, dragon, at this point, dragon at this point in the game gives more gold than Baron. Okay. Pain has their priorities in order. Well, will he get it? Sirti coming in, does actually lock that one down, but Arnea, very blood hungry, looking in for maybe a fight right there. And you see the random omen picked up on him, the random omen picked up on Kevin. We should talk about items just a little bit here because Kerp, he's already been doing a lot of damage. It seems like everybody just wants to prioritize stacking armor. Um, they, they're not really afraid of Ari at this point in the game. Uh, Olaf has a lot of natural magic because it's because of ultimate. And Lee Sin, I don't really think he cares if he gets poked. He's like, oh, if you're gonna blow your whole Ari combo on me, I'm gonna be happy to take that as a jungler. So he just wants to be as tanky as possible and just sit on that Jinx, sit on that Vi, sit on that Trundle, and make sure that he doesn't get to their back line. Because Lucian's pretty damn fed at this point in the game. He has his last list for his BT, his Triforce, and he's just gonna melt that tank line. 260 CS, 24 CS ahead. With that Baron, but there's a Baron middle, no pun of curve right there. We're seeing BRTT be out of him. Just a little bit see Kevin potentially chasing him down if he did want to cross that side. And I wonder, are we going to potentially see a dive come in here? Because they have that 
Any Kibbers to open this one up. Yeah, Andy doesn't ever flash up, but I guarantee if uh, one of the squishies comes up to try to clear that wave, you're going to see Gragas Barrel or Andy combo, and somebody's going to die. And look at that damage right there. Just one head of purpose. Ultimate still up right now. Kami getting harassed out. The turret game taken. A horse to get the hell out. I think Bear Dyke flashed away. He's got to be very careful because if one stun, one slow lands, that's going to be the end of them. They get the inhibitor turret. They're inhibitor. And with the barrels, they just keep landing one after another, even onto the tankiest amount of pain. I really like the way that Kerb uses his ultimate just to, to chunk them so they can't fight for that turret. He took uh, he took Kami down to like 10% health, and once he's at that low health, that's a free turn for them. Oh, and the Napoleon going off to base right now to heal up. He doesn't have home cards yet, which is a little bit unfortunate for him. And Kevin, he's just taking out that turn, not really caring. He does get hooked in. He's going to start getting a little bit low here, but with that very buff, I would imagine it's not really too worried. Yeah, Ari's ultimate's out now. Bragg's ultimate's just about to come back. I guarantee he's going to do the exact same thing. Throw out his ultimate to chunk him and make the turn. It's called it. Oh, ultimate out of Eddie actually pick up that one go and back away off of this. They're happy with that. They have the very buff regen to still commit for this push. And that turret is already dropping very, very low. Or eventually will. <laughs> <laughs> I think they gotta wait on the creeps for that. Maybe a little ambi over ambitious to get it right now. Take over to do that, so definitely gonna be a turret. And Kevin, he's going to engage your Ragnarok pop is taking out the turret as well. Chase after PRTT. He does get with the barrel now, maneuver getting very low creeps and just diving straight in. Arnea zoning them out here. The second inhibitor turret goes down, the second inhibitors go down as well. Now, I want to say with BRTT down, the Millennium could finish this game, but in fact, they're going to play it safe. They're going to some buffs. Yeah, alright, just this game. But I guess just want to play it safe. You know, just want to make sure they get the nice lane win. Our Millennium, about 33 minutes into the game. The lead, 16,000 gold. I mean, it's just so far. And obviously, the longer the game does go on, it won't matter as much. But Kami just. What's so weird is, is that. We talked about the whole game plan of pain. They want to catch someone with the skill shot. They want to, you know, charm them or hook them and really open it up for an entire burst down. Yeah. But, but the front line of Millennium, they just don't care. They can't even be bursted by pain. I think that pain made almost the same mistake that us thought. World Drag is actually pretty tank laner. Lee Sin, somebody that usually can't blow up because he's so slippery. Uh, he has so many ways of getting out. And Olaf, like, who the hell is going to kill this guy? He's been sitting up in top lane, like, 1v5ing them. He just doesn't care. Like, who, who are they going to pick off on that team? And so Ari is just going to become a moot, moot point in the game. She's not going to be a factor at all. So I, I'm not sure I feel about the Ari pick. One fight where they got that little bit of edge had a, a little bit to do with it. But I still think if this went the game and they were pretty close in farm, I would have still gave it to Millennium's team now. All right, we're right now we're about 34 minutes in. We're looking at that final push potentially coming in. We have those two inhibitors being down middle and bottom. Super minutes are starting to flood into those lanes. And Millennium, they don't have Baron buff anymore, but they have all five men off lane. They have got a Kevin, not the man they wanted. So you can see the damage pretty much doing nothing. You see actually Kai going to the backside, lands a charm, but Creedson's Banshee Veil does cleanse that off. And they are just stalling. I mean, we can take a look really quickly over here. We see the Super pushing in. They're, they need to do something about it soon. And right now Millennium are just stalling. They don't really care. Yeah, they're going to have to send down for that. It's going to take her a while to clear out. Uh, so they're probably just going to get a lot of free chunk off on the turret. Here we go. The barrels are landing for Kirk here. Payne are taking a lot of chip. Houston can do a dodge in. We do see one Nexus turret actually fall. Look how mans are on this Nexus turret. They have to let them go. Or they're going to have to go for a fight here. And they do back away. They're going to take those down. The landing are going to take the last inhibitor turret of the game. Take the last inhibitor as well. And with that next turret still almost fine, they do finally go for the game. They get pushed eight stack, trying to convert TT into the team, but now he's being forced to run away. He gets a little bit slippery, but it looks like he might go down with the combo CC that they have. The anti ultimate comes down on a beer team. He gets blown up by Kerb. Now the rest of Pain are being forced to completely run away. A one for one trade, but that last next turret, that is going down. Kami gets done. He goes down. He's going to get a kill on to Jerry, but it's not going to matter much in the end. The next is falling away. They're looking for some more kills on a certain team, which is KD doesn't mean anything here. I'm going to close out the first game this game against Pain Gaming in a very, very one-sided affair. Yeah, I know it's an ugly game when the support's almost one-shotting your AD carry. <laughs> that was uh, pretty ugly at the end. Um, I don't know, I think Pain Gaming just needs to, to get a little bit of better team comp and not, uh, I don't know, like that whole situation at the top lane, I think that's that really put their team behind. Um, it put so much pressure and they eventually had to deal with that Olaf and that, yeah, there was nothing they could do about him. So, uh, I don't know, I'd like to see maybe a bitch mistake. Now you're saying, I mean, picking it that early, you could be contacted. him. We had the Olaf come in and he didn't give cares about what Venom was doing. He was pretty disgusting. And then RNA made sure that that, that matchup was a living hell. I would not want to be that yeah. trundle on that. I think, I think it's, we saw the one fight break up. We saw two of those from the lane. They're able to 
blow out of Summoner's way from Pain, and then RNA, he just, he stuck top lane until he guaranteed a kill on a Venom. And then after yep. that, he said, all right, getting top lane, Kevin, he's got this, he's got two kills under his belt. Well, I mean, the Trundle eventually became, yeah, Venom's like, well, I'm the jungler for the team now. So, uh, screw this top lane, I'm gonna be taking these double golems he that game, and so for the top of that, Lucy lane, mm -hmm. did really well. Like you said, Cretan and uh, Jamie weren't really shining in this tournament. Right. And I think they uh, kind of woke up. <laughs> they finally have woken yeah. up. But quickly, before we go to break here, what does Pain do you think need to do differently? Is it all in the picks and bans, or was it that level one that really kind of threw them off? It's, it's against this really tanky team comp. And then, of course, they got behind and just got played out like a mess. So it's a combo of all those things. Okay. So if they can fix those problems, then maybe have a little. All right, guys, we're going to go to a quick little break here. But the real question is, Kevin.